I got shade. <laughs> Kuha na ka ng picture dali, tiyaya na dali. Ano ba yan? Ano ba yan? Hey, what's up guys? Joe are here. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna be going on a journey, if you will, a build log. We're going to build the PC of a client that I have. It's actually for a friend's uh, brother. So it's kind of a birthday gift. Um, leading up to, I guess, Christmas as well. It's kind of a nice gift. It's a gaming PC. And yeah, we're going to take you on the ride. So stay with me if you want to see how that turns out. And here we are at the parts that we're going to be using. Whoa. So this is a gaming and photo editing rig, but I guess there's more of an emphasis on gaming. So let's go over the parts real quick, um, starting with the CPU, the Core i5-13600KF from Intel, 14 core, 20 thread, beast of an i5. Went with this, because this is like the mid-range king right now. This is an excellent CPU, whether you're gaming or doing content creation. So before the comments roast me, we wanted to pick a platform that makes sense on a budget perspective so that's why I decided to pick and use this Z690 chipset motherboard DDR4 by the way so we can take advantage of how cheap DDR4 is at the time of filming MSI Pro Z690A Wi-Fi it's a nice cheaper ish uh, Z690 board um, it's a good pairing with the Core i5 13600KF because it's a case queue. So, should the owner want to do any kind of overclocking, that's a possibility for them because this is the only way this makes sense, right? Okay, so let's take a look inside because I picked this up from the store. I bought this all from PC Hub, by the way, not sponsored, by the way. Uh, we put a little bit of the other parts inside here. 32 gigabytes of G Skill Rip Jaws V RAM. This is 32 gigabytes of CL18 DDR4 3600, I believe. Yeah, so it's non RGB. It's just a nice black, you know, sensible kit. For our SSD, uh, we went with two terabytes of Patriot P300. So it's a Gen 3 drive. I know that's not necessarily the best pairing when it comes to. You know these z690 boards having support for gen 4 um if we're just primarily gaming you know it's not going to matter too much this is a pretty good deal right now this is like less than ten thousand pesos so yeah went with a pretty basic you know popular choice in terms of tower coolers i didn't really want to go with an aio because you know there's an added hassle and you know this is like a good basic cooler anyway this is a Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. As far as I know, this is non-RGB. I think you can tell from that. And yeah, this is a pretty inexpensive tower cooler. Um, it's gonna be plenty, I think, for the use case if it's just gonna be primarily gaming and um, you know some photo editing. We're not gonna need like a beefy AIO or anything like that. So yeah, this is good. To juice up our build, we have this Wow, I realized I've never actually seen this packaging before on their power supplies. This is the new one. This is the Corsair CX750M. So it's a semi-modular power supply. And yeah, this is going to be like pretty substantial for our build. Um, it has a little bit of room for upgrades. Like let's say they wanted to bump up to a 3080 class card. I wouldn't bump up to like a 3090 because... I think that requires at least 850 watts so yeah this is gonna be pretty good for the pairing that we chose so we'll talk about that in a little bit okay and this is our video card our graphics card so we went with the asus dual geforce rtx 3060 ti it's a pretty simple uh, design nice and clean you know minimal stealth aesthetic in terms of like modern gpus the real value is in the amd cards like the radeon cards especially like the 6600 6600 xt 
6700 XT, those are like really good value. Um, but there still is something to be said of NVIDIA cards, Team Green cards such as this. And among all the offerings really at around, I think, at the price of 26,000, 27,000 pesos, this 3060 Ti is a pretty good buy. Like it's gonna be excellent for high refresh rate, 1080p or even 1440p gaming. And you know, with the other features like the LSS um, upscaling, all the upscaling tech that we have available these days in some games, um, this could even, you know, kind of do 4K upscaled, <laughs> not too much on the uh, native rendering, but yeah, this is a really solid GPU. This is what I usually recommend for um, clients that want, you know, a brand new gaming PC that's like on the mid-range or upper mid-range. So yeah, 3060 Ti. To house all the parts that we've chosen today, we've gone with a Montec Sky One Lite. So that's like a quick render. I mean, like a drawing of the case on the side. So it's a. This is a budget case. Um, it's not got. It doesn't have like the best, like you know, premium build quality out of all the cases available out there. But I pick this, and I usually pick this for brand new builders that aren't too picky about build quality and stuff and they like good value this is a good value case it's got mesh i don't know if you can tell i'll show you in i'll show you later what it looks like in person but yeah it's got mesh front panel so this is like an rgb strip um down the middle um tempered glass uh with a hinge so you can like open it up and close it uh, really easily and as far as i recall when i was booking this when i was ordering this Let's see, how many fans does it have? Three or four? Anyway, we'll find out. We'll probably, I'll tell you in, <laughs> in post what, how many fans it has. These are all the parts and let's start the build. So here we go. This is a look at the Montec Sky One Lite. Okay, that's me in the reflection. Yeah, so as I said, it has perforations in the front for that nice airflow and yeah, here's like the door to the inside. Can we do it with one hand? Yes. So yeah, this is what it looks like. Okay, so from what it looks like, we have one, two, and three 120 millimeter fans. Uh, we can see we have space for another one on top. But yeah, that's the case. We are gonna spend this time now installing as much stuff as we can. Um, outside the case. So we typically start out with our motherboard so we're gonna take this out and lay it on top of the motherboard box. Okay so we've laid it out on the motherboard box. This is like a nice makeshift bench where you can just install all the pieces well, before you actually install the case. Um, so yeah we'll start with the CPU. All right, we'll show you real quickly. This is the Core i5-13600KF, and we're gonna show you how to install it on this socket, as I'm pointing with my pinky. All right, so what you wanna do here is see this arm, this retention arm, so you press down and to the side, and see the retention arm will lift, and we lift this back, and exposing the pins. These pins are very delicate, so please be careful. Okay, and the way to go about this is to look at your CPU um, here in the bottom. Come on, focus. So on the bottom left of the CPU, this is the text facing up, um, there's like a golden triangle right there. And there's also like the faintest triangle on the heat spreader of the CPU. So you want to line that up with putting that back a little bit. So yeah, you'll notice there's also a triangle on this um, plastic cover. So that tells you that the orientation of the CPU is like so. And installing this is super simple. You don't actually have to put any force. You just line it up like so, drop it, give it a little wiggle. You're not supposed to like press down or anything. But yeah, you put this piece back down. There, I went ahead and removed this off camera. It should be fairly simple to remove. You put back this bracket down. You take the retention arm. It's gonna require a little bit of force. Don't worry about that, that's totally normal. And we just basically 
reverse the process and boom your CPU is installed okay we're done with the CPU over there and now we're gonna install the RAM and we have four RAM slots so I did this deliberately so just in case you know the user needs and uh, sees a need for 64 gigs you know they can just easily buy another kit of this and add them on their extra slots so we're gonna be installing them in slot number two and four installing RAM is pretty simple you just gotta make sure um, you open these latches on the sides so this means it's open the other one is closed so like I said two and four we open the second and the fourth and um, the way to line it up so that you don't you know you don't really make mistakes here is to line up you see this notch right here in the middle this like open little notch so you have to line that up with a notch on the motherboard there's like that little thing there there it's all lined up and you can do this with two hands but I'm just gonna use one hand you press firmly on both sides until you hear a satisfying click so let's see there you go you'll notice that the uh, latches that we opened earlier are now fully closed all right and I'll go ahead and install the second one because it's basically the same thing bada bing bada boom our RAM is installed perfect before we actually install the CPU heatsink we're gonna do the SSD to install the SSD we're gonna need to remove this bit uh, the part I forgot to mention about building PCs you don't really need a lot of tools um, the only thing you really need is a Phillips head screwdriver yeah so here's our two terabyte stick of SSD we're gonna install it now so we go at an angle like that it's keyed so you can only insert it one way kind of press it down and um, I like this kind because you don't need a uh, you don't really need to screw it in anymore and it's just kind of you know kind of a latch for this one um, this is like a heat sink on top of it so what you want to do is remove make sure you remove this because if you remove this um, it's gonna have better contact between the heat sink and the SSD all right so we're removing removing there we go wow there's like a big indent there whatever we're just gonna screw things back up again and there we go this is the cooler kind of actually a silverish finish this is a 120 mm fan 120 mils and i believe it is compatible with lga 1700 out of the box yeah there it is it's the first one so i'll show you how to um i guess pick out the parts for the bracket that will install on the back and yeah yeah, so sorry if you can hear the background, my wife's watching Netflix, but that's fine. Uh, so we gotta look for this. This is our LGA 1700 bracket. See, it matches the photo there. And we will put this on the back of our motherboard. Yeah, there, so you can see the screw holes are on the four corners of our CPU socket. And looks like we need the screws labeled as G, so. I have them right here yeah so I did a little bit of it off camera as and as you can see we've attached the uh, I guess the uh, screws um, which attach to the um, cooler itself with like this bar and then the, the, there's, there's the G screws that we took and yep please do not ignore this warning right in the center please peel off this label before you use it so we're gonna peel it off there we go, exposing the heat pipes that take away heat from the heat spreader of the CPU. And the next part is applying a bit of thermal paste to ensure thermal conductivity between the um, CPU itself and the heat CPU heatsink. So I'll show you real quick. So you kind of want to go a little bit in the middle and I think that's too much. I mean, that's enough. Yeah, that's, that's probably enough. For our surfaces so you don't want to put too much because the pressure from the CPU heatsink will you know flatten that out and even everything out so I think that's fine and the way this goes you make sure the cooler master logo is facing uh, upright and 
away we go. I'll see you on the other side. There, so we've gotten it seated in the screw holes, and you want to do like a crisscross pattern when you screw this down. So, top, top right, bottom left, a little bit, just you know, to keep it down, and then bottom right. Okay, maybe I have to do this with both hands. Please bear with me. Okay, four screws tightened. If they stop. Um, turning when you screw it down that means it's tight enough and make sure you return the fans uh, with the fan clips to kind of clip on to the side of the fins and there you go installed the CPU cooler and let's just install this CPU fan there's like a little piece of text that says CPU fan all right cooler installed and since we're done installing as much as we can on the motherboard outside of the case, it's time for us, as you can see, to bring out the actual case. Yeah, so this is a nice case, like I said. It's like a good value because it has these included fans. Um, it doesn't really do like PWM as far as I remember. PWM um, type fans, the ones with four pins, are usually better for like um, control of the fans you know going faster and stuff but since it's just a basic case and I have pretty good experience with Montec so yeah the fact that it's airflow has a little bit of RGB you know it's a pretty good value so yeah so now I'm gonna remove um, the remaining panel in the case in the back so that we can install the motherboard into the motherboard tray and we'll go from there there so this came with um, captive thumb screws in the back meaning they don't fall off even if you unscrew it so let's remove the panel revealing the back of the case uh, one side note I want to make um, when you're working on building the PC still what I like to do with these panels especially the uh, the tempered glass one is put them back in the box you know it's kind of out of the way and you don't have to super worry about breaking anything so yeah, yeah. So let's take a quick tour of the back of the case this time. So this is a very you know basic kind of cheap case, um, but represents good value. Like I have been saying, like a broken record. Um, so these are all the cables. So this represents all you know any lighting or connectivity that we have on top. So yeah, these cables connect to these buttons and ports up here let's do a quick trip so power button reset switch um, LED so if we don't really want to use the onboard um, software controls uh, meaning changing the colors of this light here we can just use this button uh, mic and headphone jack so that's a split type this is the uh, USB 3 headers and a USB Type-C. Hmm, I actually didn't check but it is motherboard had a Type-C header. No, it does. It does. There you go. Just confirmed for you guys right now. So we'll be able to use this top USB-C. And yeah, this is where they all terminate to. So these will all just connect to the motherboard in some way, shape, or form. Um, in terms of other features, yeah, there's a hard drive sled down here. Um, hard drives are not too common these days because SSDs have gotten very cheap uh, these days. Uh, put your SSDs on trays like that. And what's more, uh, hard drives like, you know, have spinning disks, physical disks. So the chances of that breaking are definitely uh, a thing compared to like a solid state drive. Anyway, uh, this is here, should you want the option. I believe you can also install um, like a 2.5 inch SSD here, a SATA SSD as well. Usually cases will have uh, the little peripherals, like the screws and stuff inside boxes. So make sure you check inside. So we're gonna need the uh, screws to screw down our motherboard. One final thing before we install the motherboard. So, so this is your motherboard IO shield. This is where all the connections to peripherals, you know, Ethernet, um, Wi-Fi, antennae, antennae go. So, yeah, you're supposed to make sure you <laughs> install this first before you screw down your motherboard because sometimes people forget and, you know, there's like a big gaping hole and it's kind of a hassle to remove everything. But, yeah, 
Uh, put this on first before you screw down your motherboard. Uh, please be very careful with this. This is typically where people, you know, get wounds because the edges of this thing are pretty sharp. So just be careful. There, so it's in. I'm just gonna do this a bit off camera, but I checked all the standoffs are in place and it just kind of needs a little bit of support before we screw it down. So yeah, I'll see you in a bit. And voila, with the power of movie magic, we are done. Um, it had, I had to use like nine screws, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine to secure our motherboard. And yeah, we can stand up the case now. All right, there we go. Nice and secure. Um, it's wobbly because the table is a little wobbly, but yeah. On to the next, let's install the power supply. Okay, I saved you some of the boring stuff and went ahead and unboxed our CX750M. So as I mentioned, this is a modular power supply. That's what the M stands for. Um, that means semi-modular, meaning semi of all the cables, like not all of them, will be modular, meaning plugging in what you only need. So as you can see, we have our 24 pin ATX power and our 8 pin CPU supplemental power. So these are actually just part of the motherboard, but you know, almost every PC will have these. The ones that are modular are these other cables. Now, I left some of the extras in the box, but here we have uh, some of our um, SATA power. I believe our case will need a little bit of this for some juice. And I went ahead and took two PCIe cables for our graphics card. And boom, you can just refer to the manual, but these are the only cables, the only extra cables we're gonna need. So we'll go ahead and install this inside the case. Um, I tend to use the screws that come with the power supply, although the case will come with similar, you know, power supply screws so that you can put it in the basement of your case. All right, so as far as orientation of the power supply goes, you locate the fan of your power supply. And for our case, you'll notice there is a uh, kind of like a, a fan grill at the bottom, meaning um, the power supply will intake air through this up into the power supply and exhaust the hot air in the back. So that's why you want this fan facing down. <laughs> it's a little difficult doing it with one hand. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay. Power supply seated properly. Now to screw them in. There we go. Oh, ice cream man. Ice cream man. Can you give me a free ice cream? Oh, he stopped. <laughs> yeah, so this video isn't really a tutorial step by step. So I'm just going to skip explaining where all of these cables go. Let me know in the comments below if the next video I make should be a step by step guide. Okay, after quite a while of finagling and cable managing this is what we got and you know it's not perfect by any means it's like it's okay um i could definitely like put more zip ties and whatever but you know this is decent uh what do you think how do you think i did on the cable management this part here looks a little sus but i don't care um it's not gonna show up anyway because we have a cable management shroud, like a power supply basement. I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. This is the shroud I was talking about. You can actually see the power supply down there. Actually, in retrospect, you could have put the power supply um, 180 degrees facing upwards, the fan facing upwards, but since we have that dust filter down here, then that was the better choice. Yeah, I think it looks pretty clean. Um, put the cables down here. Um, the reason why I went with, you know, two PCIe's um, instead of just doing the, like the ribbon, like the, the conjoined one, um, people have been saying that this, doing this uh, connected with this can be a little bit problematic for some cards. Um, we just did it this way with two um, connectors coming straight from the power supply because that's like best practice. So yeah, um, we're pretty much done. We're going to install the power supply 
and see if we get a post. Okay, we're pretty much done, and that cat is losing its mind. So yeah, we're pretty much done, and now we're going to clean up a little bit this table. Lots of um, rubbish, but we're going to connect the graphics card, and we're going to see if it posts. Okay, and our graphics card, we went with a fairly competent gaming graphics card. This is the Asus Dual GeForce RTX 3060 Ti. Okay, we've removed the inner box from the outer box and let's take you on this journey opening the 3060 ti and there it is fairly simple am i gonna be able to remove this with one hand maybe not unpacking steps okay there's steps over there wow this is fairly more complicated than i had anticipated they've got this like plastic wrap that's very tightly wrapped around the thing anyway let's open it up okay i get it now it's kind of like a clasp that is held together by this it's kind of janky honestly but here it is 3060 ti it's actually quite beefier than i had anticipated and wow only one eight pin cool all right let's remove this plastic wrap and let's get it in get to removing all of these plastic plastic covers this is the least asmr thing i apologize for all you asmr enjoyers it's kind of poorly implemented implemented poorly implemented yeah let's admire it just a little bit so yeah that's the back plate it's made of, I think it's made of plastic. Fun fact, GPUs did not always come with backplates, but, you know, added value these days. This is the heatsink design. It's got two fans that are quite big. This is how it looks like on the side. I can see that there's uh, two modes for the BIOS, like a performance mode and a quiet mode. We're not going to bother with that. It's just going to leave it on performance mode in terms of io we have quite a bit um i can count two hdmi ports and three display ports so in case the client wants to use multiple monitor setups they're covered so in preparation for installation of the gpu in the pcie top slot over here um this is how it looks like in the back so these are reusable PCIe slot covers. For our purposes, we're gonna be removing the second and the third slot covers. So yeah, so these are these things. Um, we hold on to these screws because these are the screws that are gonna hold on our graphics card to the case. And yeah, let's install the graphics card. You have to make sure that this top um, latch is depressed downwards. We're gonna just line it up and somehow, somewhere, it's in. So the uh, latch that's on the end of the PCI slot, it's back up now. So that's how you know it's in. And we're gonna go and secure this with the screws on the back. Yeah, and so since we have discovered that this 3060 Ti by Asus only has one 8-pin connector, we went ahead and, you know, kind of pulled the other PCIe um, cable towards the back so I'm gonna leave that in as a courtesy connector in case you know the user wants to upgrade to something beefier they'll immediately have the option to do it they don't actually have to you know fumble inside the PSU box and it's already gonna be in the case so I hope that's cool and here we go connecting the 8 pin so this is like a 6 plus 2 pin, so 6 pins, and then you kind of bunch it together with the second pin, and uh, with, with the plus 2 pin, and there we go. So this is going to go straight <laughs> into the PCIe uh, socket on the card. And you got to make sure it's flush, no spaces or anything, and we're good okay so let's take a moment to admire the work we've done this is the completed build um, 
think it looks very nice. I mean, I don't like this little warranty void if removed thing. I'm sure we can move this. We don't want to void our warranty, so I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna manage that. But yeah, it looks nice and stealthy. We're gonna take it to a monitor and see if we get a post. Hey, there's a doggo. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Say hi to YouTube. All right, so we've set up our makeshift test bench to see if this will post. So here we go. It's plugged into the wall. Uh, make sure our power supply is switched on. Yep. And here we go. Okay, it's a good sign. All right. Okay. We're booting up. Ooh, we're getting a light that is going back and forth between red and orange. I think this means that the BIOS of this motherboard is not updated. But luckily, we have USB and we're going to update the BIOS first. And good for us, this has a BIOS flashback button, so we don't actually need a 12th gen CPU to do that. So let's do that now. All right. So if you run into the same problem that I did where the CPU, especially the 13th gen CPU, doesn't work on a Z690 motherboard, you can just go and check the motherboard website, uh, Pro Z690 ADDR4, and you go to Drivers and Downloads, you click BIOS, and usually these come with like dependencies if you need to download an older one. But in this case, I just went ahead and picked the latest BIOS available and through the thumb drive, you can insert it in one of the USB ports, which I'll show you. Um, it's specifically labeled Flash BIOS and it allows you to update the BIOS without having to need a older CPU. So let's take a look. Yeah, so I went ahead and skipped all of those uh, steps in the video just so that we're a little bit faster. but. Here on our specific motherboard, there is this USB slot up here on the top left, and it says Flash BIOS. Yeah, and then the Flash BIOS button. So basically, I downloaded the latest uh, BIOS slash UEFI file that I showed you on the product page, put it in the root directory of this USB, um, plugged the USB directly into this PC, and I pressed the flash bias button. Now, it was a little scary doing this earlier because uh, we had to wait something like 10 to 15 minutes. So the USB and you know the lights are just kind of be doing their own thing. But yeah, um, as you can see, we now have a Windows uh, installation screen and that's because the update to the, of the BIOS was successful. So now the motherboard will natively support the 13600KF that we have installed. So yeah. All right, that's it for the build. Uh, I'll show you some other shots of, the, of the, uh, the completed build before we end this video, but I'm gonna install Windows for my client now. Okay, just to show you real quick that the BIOS is showing properly the UEFI, so Intel, 13th gen Core i5 13600KF 32, 32 gigabytes of RAM and that is the most updated BIOS version and yeah proves that it worked yeah that took me the whole afternoon to build this PC oh, let's get a shot of it right here yeah I think it looks really dope it's all stealth black build kind of like minimal RGB um, yeah, I can't wait to install Windows and test different games on it because the 13600K was definitely like the centerpiece of this build. It's going to be an awesome, awesome gaming CPU. So if you enjoyed this, please do consider leaving a like below the video. It really helps out the channel a lot. And um, tell me what other builds that you want to see on the channel. Till next time, this is Joer and we'll build more stuff in the future.